it's simply incredible. It's a piece of television history now. It's, you know, not many shows make it to 300. And um, I got a seven-year break. Yeah, I was here for the first seven seasons, and I just came back this year, and it's really a thrill to be here for the 300th. I, I just feel, I, I don't think I even really understood until today what a big deal it is. I We all felt so emotionally overwhelmed when we cut the cake, and the network and the studio came to celebrate, and, and it's just, it's, it's a privilege. The 300th episode I wrote as um, sort of a love letter to the early years of a show. It's very nostalgic. I found a way to um, visit, to revisit all the ghosts of our past. The theme of the episode is the ghosts of our past, and I found a way to um, to help, I think, the fans feel the presence in some way or another of the characters we've lost. And also, I, I created something of an Easter egg hunt for fans who've been watching for all 14 seasons, just l little references and things that... Uh, we haven't seen for a while, actors we haven't seen for a while, and um, yeah, so it's a, it's a nostalgic, it's a love letter to the fans. It's a love letter to the fans of the early years of the show. We were a great big hit out of the gate, and that was a wild ride. I had never been on a show. There are so few shows that take off like a bullet train the way Grey's Anatomy did, and um, it was really incredible to be here in the center of that storm at the beginning. And now there's a new storm because when the show hit Netflix, a whole new generation of fans started watching. And uh, and my boyfriend is, has a son who's 12 and he's watching the show and all of his friends are watching the show. And that's, it's just incredible that people who were not yet born when we started making this are new fans of the early seasons and, and binge watching 14 years. And I... I I don't know if I'll ever be a part of something that's, a, that's bigger than this. We feel like we have an incredible platform here to have a voice in the world, and I feel like I have an opportunity to give some relief, some comic relief to the people who are out fighting on a lot of different fronts right now. I have a friend who did five tours in Afghanistan, and he came back and he became a comedian. And he said that he did that because it was the comedians, it was the comedy movies that kept him sane and kept him, he believes, alive through that work that he was doing. He needed the relief. People need to laugh. And things have become, um, it feels pretty dark in the world uh, and in politics and in the news. And I came into this season with a desire to bring a uh, to bring back the light and the joy and the fun and the funny of the early years that had faded a little bit in recent years since McDreamy died and everybody, there was a lot of grieving. I wanted to come back and bring the joy and the fun back, the funny back, uh, because I think people need to laugh. They need to laugh so that they can get up every morning and keep doing the things they need to do to affect the world in a positive way. So that's what keeps me going. It's my, it's my activism to give people a chance to laugh. I wrote an episode about the death of my father called Six Days, Parts One and Two, and, um, and I got thousands of emails from fans thanking me for putting my story and my dad's story on the show um, and giving voice to these feelings that are indescribable when you lose a parent. And uh, that was really meaningful for me.